Hello Horatio, it is Tuesday. I try always to have like a funny T word at the beginning of my things and I just fail so miserably that I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. Um, today I've been thinking about things in a little bit more of a theoretical framework and a theoretical lens so I, I hope that you can forgive me as I uh, take a weirdly attempted academic-y thing for a change. Not that I don't always, but just like specifically I'm trying. Um, it was inspired actually, or it is inspired actually, by the combination of, uh, of your talk at Interface 2013, of Sarah Thorne's talk on amnesia and soundscape in uh, 2013, and by Emma Vossen's talk about the differences between the sexuality and sexual partnering uh, in the Walking Dead comic series versus the video games. Uh, and sorry, I, I should have said, um, and yours in terms of personal games, uh, feminism, uh, trans games, and how and how it is to play through things that don't um, that don't operate on the same sort of uh, vein, I guess, as typical games do. Uh, from that, I I have been playing an awful lot. <laughs> an awful lot of horror survival video games recently. Um, in specific though, I want to focus on, on three. I want to focus on Amnesia and Justine, uh, Justine being a, a counterpart to Amnesia, um, and Penumbra, uh, which like precedes those ones, but it happens in a very different space. Amnesia and Justine take place in this like weird Byronic <laughs> castle, um, which is specifically gothic, uh, versus Penumbra, which, take pla which takes place sorry, in these catacombs underneath the, the earth in these like mining places in Antarctica, completely devoid of your typical rounds of, of people and humanity. Um, so I wanted to focus actually on sexuality, sexual arousal in survival horror games and the principles of pleasure that happen when we play those things. So that's what I'd like to talk about. Um, and it was, in order to do this, I sort of revisited this book. <laughs> um, and it's, it's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Uh, but in specific, it's the Norton Critical Edition, in which they, they have these great articles at the back, um, two of which I'm going to focus on specifically. The first is by Ellen Moores, and it talks about the female gothic, the monster's mother. That's the title. And the second is my favorite, because it's all about psychoanalysis. It's by Susan Ouinette. It's called Coming Unstrung, Women, Men, Narrative, and the Principles of Pleasure. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> where to start, really? Um, basically, the gothic is an abstract thing, but it revolves specifically around fear and fantasy. So when we play through the amnesia or Justine spaces, we're thinking about a very gothic uh, experience. And Ellen Morris writes, and this is a long quotation, so I'm really sorry, but it's really good. She writes that in Gothic writings, fantasy predominates over reality, the strange over the commonplace, and the supernatural over the natural, with one definite pictorial intent, to scare. Not, that is, to reach down into the depths of the soul and purge it with pity and terror, as we say tragedy does, but to get back to the body itself, its glands, epidermic, muscles, and circulatory system, quickly arousing and quickly allaying the physical reactions to fear. And I think that this is what's so fascinating, is this like quick arousal and quick allaying of the physical reactions to fear in, I want to say in compulsion with, but that's not the right thing, in, in, in tandem, but also uh, compulsory <laughs> to the body. Uh, and not just like our body's reaction to it, but the bodies that are on display, the bodies that are present in these spaces. Um, and in specific, uh, or rather to, to build on that, Susan Wynette comes out and talks about how typical narrative, typical fictions, are sort of built around the idea of male pleasure. Um, and I'm paraphrasing here, I really want to have a quotation, but I just, I love her article so much <laughs> that it's really hard for me to, to, to take a specific quotation. I just, all of it is great. Anyway, she talks about how male pleasure operates and how it works in fiction, right? Fiction and narrative are especially good at, um, at eviscerating male pleasure, which is all about tumescence and building up to this point, and then when it builds, it climaxes, it ends, it's very, it's very visual. Um, there's like an actual, an actual uh, physical proponent that comes out, right? Um, whereas 
female narratives can occupy a different space. And I love Winnett's argument is that it's not like one opposes the other. It's that there are different forms of pleasure, of arousal, of experience, uh, and that narratives that deprive, let's say, their, their player, their author, their reader of this climactic experience are actually involved in a very feminine space, involved in a different kind of pleasure. And I think that this is what's so fascinating, um, is that it's, it's in part derived by fear, specifically if we're looking at the, the, the gothic space, um, but it's also derived by this idea of birthing, um, and I don't mean in the maternal sense, I mean in like the perpetuation sense, in the sense that rather than give some sort of perfunctory solution to all the things that condenses and culminizes in a thing, it's all about the opposite of that. In fact, when we look at amnesia in specific, right, which is so fantastic because as, as Sarah talks about, it's all about depriving, depriving the player of their normative faces and senses. You're instead in this like less than visual place um, where sound occupies the majority of your of your experience in the game. Um, and if you ever do, if you ever do make the mistake of looking at the object of your desires, and I think that the bodies of the of the game space are so important here, you in fact invoke their attack. Um, they will end your experience. And that's really the only type of like male climactic experience, this idea of the confrontation and of conflict will somehow give you the, the experience of pleasure that you're hoping for or, or that you're more used to seeing. And I thought that this was so clever and interesting, especially given the preface of the game, which says, if you're looking to play this game for the typical reasons that you play a game, you are going to have a bad time. <laughs> if you try to outweigh the rules of this space, you will have a bad time. Well, not just that you'll have a bad time, but you won't experience it in the way that, that you could. Um, and so this is how, this is what I wanted to sort of talk about, um, actually, and especially, I, I want to end with this quote by Ellen Morris again. She says that, the Gothic castle, however ruined, is an indoor and therefore freely female space. And I don't really want to leave it there. I think that there's so much more to this. Um, but I really wanted to talk about that today, and I hope that that's okay. I mean, there's so much, there's so much here. I'm just, uh, like, to build on that, she also writes, the motif of revulsion against newborn life and the drama of guilt, dread, and flight surrounding birth and its consequences uh, is this experience of the, of the Gothic, is this experience of this uh, alternative alternative space. So yeah, um, I'm going to leave things there and I just wanted to show you that I got new shoes! New shoes! New shoes! New shoes! Okay, I'm good. <laughs> Sorry, it was very exciting. Anyway, so yeah, um, I hope that that's okay. <laughs> I hope I didn't miss anything and um, 